Hello and welcome back again. So really no surprise is what we're going to be looking at here. This is not a mystery unboxing or anything like that. This is a Heathkit SG8 signal generator. And I just uh, recently got this. I actually received it in the mail yesterday. That would be July 30th. The seller that I got this from, you know, claims that you no, know, they had a listing that it's been tested, it's fully functional, it's in good shape and everything. And, you know, but there was only like a few pictures of like the front and the back. There's really no pictures of like the insides of it. And that's kind of what I'm really curious to see. You know, have any capacitors been replaced? Has any work been done to it? Because these things date from back from like the, the, the 50s. And, uh, you know, I don't know when this particular unit was built. But some of the manuals that I found with the schematics, you know, and, and everything for these things, that they would date from like the, I don't know, somewhere like as early as like 54 to like 57. So I'm guessing this probably came from like, I don't know, somewhere like early to mid 50s or so. So it's a pretty old item. The cool thing about these Heath Kit kits, I'm try saying that fast a few times, is that, you know, that you can get the you can still find like all a bunch of the manuals and you know all the schematics details and everything so it's easy to get information on these things i'm kind of sad that you know i wasn't really around yet when at the time when like all this stuff was kind of like the hotness because i've always like been pretty fascinated by vacuum tube electronics which you probably wouldn't be able to tell around here since i deal a lot with like mostly you know like modern electronics and things like that but this is technically like the third piece of vacuum tube test gear that i actually own now so let's uh, stop talking here and let's just go ahead and open it up and we'll see what condition this thing's in. One thing I don't really like about the packaging here, the way it was packed, is that apparently this right here, this bulge, that's where the knobs are. So I'm hoping it didn't take any damage. I mean, there's no external damage like on the box itself or anything like that. So it doesn't like to look like anything like poked through or anything. So hopefully nothing there got um, damaged and or, you know, like pushed in. To the case or anything like that because the pictures of the device you know on the on the site were they look pretty okay but as i said you know that's all we saw was just uh the front so let's see thanks for ordering from us if you're happy with your order please leave us positive feedback well let's check it out Oh, well, if you are dissatisfied, please contact us and we'll do everything we can to make it right. So, let's find out. Alright, so it looks like we've got a fairly decent amount of bubble wrap here, but of course these knobs would just basically pop the any of the bubbles here, so not a whole lot of cushioning there. So, But that doesn't mean it's anything bad happened. And, whoa, this actually looks super clean. Yeah, actually it looks like it's going to be pretty okay. Alright, so let's pull this out. Wow. This thing is like really not in bad shape at all. Look at that. All the paint looks pretty good. There's like a little bit of smearing of some stuff there, but it's not like paint damage or anything. It just looks like there's something on the surface. Yeah, and it comes right off. So that's not a big deal. The casing, all this looks really good. Even the cord looks like it's in really good shape. It has like no, no like chew marks or anything on it. It's not damaged. The two prongs look pretty good. These connectors, they look a little chewed up right there in the center. But I'm guessing I would have to replace these anyways with like some BNCs or something just to make things easier. These are like an older style connector, so these are probably going to get replaced. I'm just going to have to look into it a little bit and see what good replacement would be. The switch here. It's a little off from where it should be, like the indicators you can see right there. It's that would be internal or external, I guess. I, I I still I'm not. I'd have to look up the manual for this to see exactly how it works. That's so that looks a little off, but I'm pretty sure I would just have to loosen that up, you know, and get this lined up so it lines up properly. But the switch actually feels pretty good, so no complaints there. AF in out. This also feels pretty good. No problems there. 
No selector switch here from A to E. Not bad. Pretty good. RF output. It's off on. Okay. Feels pretty good. And this one here is like a little misaligned too, but that's not a big deal. I mean, the switch clicks and everything, so that feels pretty good. And the adjustment knob here, super smooth. On the bottom, these feet look like they might be original. They're all still intact. No complaints there. No serious scratches or anything. There's like a little tiny chunk of paint missing there and a little tiny chunk of paint missing here. But overall, this thing looks super good. All right, so we know that the outside looks pretty good. How about the inside? Let's go ahead and remove these two screws because I think that's all we need to remove to be able to see the inside. Has anything been replaced? Are the capacitors still original? I don't know. Let's see. Does this just pop off? I mean, it's the only two screws I can see here. Hmm. Do these need to come off too? I'm not sure. Let's just, uh, might as well take them off, I guess. Mm, that's not, doesn't seem to be releasing anything. They're just kind of spinning, so they're probably on nuts or something. So, I guess I have to pry this off. Just gotta be careful not to damage the paint job on it. Let me get a little plastic pry tool, and then we'll continue. I'm breaking the plastic tool. Oh man. I'm still struggling with trying to get this thing open, but we can see that this thing has been apparently either attempted or it has been opened before because there are some little marks at where the, like a screwdriver or some other tool has kind of chewed into the metal there. And I think maybe that's what that is also on the, on the bottom right here. And on the side here, I was kind of trying a little bit, uh, but there was also already some marks there. So just to prevent damaging it anymore, I just think I'm just going to try and just getting a little screwdriver and just, you know, trying to pry it open from right there where it already looks like somebody already either did or attempted to open the thing. Well, that's super embarrassing. I'm sure that any of the radio <laughs> vacuum tube guys that are watching this are probably going to be laughing at me. It's the front that comes off. It's not the back. So whoever tried to open this up previously before, um, either figured it out or didn't figure it out at all and just didn't open it. But yeah, the front is the one that pulls off. So once we remove those screws, this is what's supposed to come out. So that's the, the back of the case. You can just pull the cable through from there. And now this is the actual chassis. It doesn't look like it's in bad shape. It looks pretty good. See, we've got our coils here. Got some inductors or transformers right there. I haven't really paid much attention to the schematic for this thing just yet. Uh, on the bottom. Oh yeah, nothing's been replaced. Everything here is still looks pretty original. So this right here looks like it's an old electrolytic cap. That's gonna have to go. These are some sort of film cap, I'm assuming. I'm not sure, probably have to look those up, um, but those may have to go as well, I'm not sure. Yeah, tuning capacitor down there, it looks fairly clean. No real dust accumulation or anything like that. Wafer switches, might need a bit of a cleaning, but otherwise they look like they're in pretty good shape. This looks like a This down here looks like a selenium rectifier or something. But overall, it doesn't look too bad. And whoever built this looks like they did a pretty decent job as well. So not really anything to complain about that I can see. The contacts on that wafer switch right there, like you can see, they're, they're a little bit tarnished. But I mean, all that really needs is just the cleaning. Not like the switch is really damaged or anything. This one right here is actually a dual capacitor. So it's got the one terminal on one end and then it's got two positives over here. So it looks like 220 microfarad caps, 150 volts each on that one right there. So not a big deal to replace. This would here would just, I would just put like two electrolytics there in place of this one. These grommets are surprisingly still in really good shape. They're still nice and rubbery, protecting these cables from the chassis there. There's one here and there's one right there underneath that electrolytic capacitor. Both of those are in really good shape. 
and there's a couple more towards the front uh, it's kind of hard to see underneath like that resistor right there and then there's one over on this side so everything inside of this looks like it's in really good condition so it either wasn't used very much or it was just really well taken care of so we got our our tubes right there we've got two tubes and yeah that's all it has just the uh, the one tube up here what is that that is a actually you can pull this off and take a look it's an Amperex tube it says it's Holland got a little tube there guy little tube guy playing a trumpet or a horn it's a 12 AU7 I don't ask me because I really don't know that much about vacuum tubes but that's what that is the pins on that look very clean like there's no tarnishing at all on those so that's looks that looks really good then our second tube we have in there this one's actually Heathkit branded made in the USA for Heathkit by General Electric Company oh the numbers actually up here it's just very hard to see so that looks like it's a 6C4 6C4 I believe yeah so again really not much tarnishing or anything on those pins it's like it's in really good shape I mean I don't know how strong these tubes are or if they you know they test all that well or anything but you know according to the thing this thing was fully working so the external terminals are really not going to be hard to replace we can see all they have here is a nut the outside is basically just grounded to the chassis through these nuts and you know directly to the chassis itself we see we got our wires coming in here going down through those grommets same thing on the other side right here you know just got to remove that nut these solder that little wire right there and then there's this wire that goes down so that looks like it's going to be fairly easy to do this here is just our indicator and this is looks like it's replaceable from the front just by unscrewing that and that yep there's a light bulb so that would just twist out and come right out it's like a little bayonet style bulb and even this looks like it's fairly original it's probably like the one thing that has like the most tarnishing on it there's a little bit of green stuff right here but you know, it's not really affecting anything here's a close-up of those coils for those of you that are into that sort of thing nicely tightly wound coils but I mean these would have come probably like pre-assembled you know they're not gonna be wound by the by the kit builder this one here has like pretty coarse wire on it not bigger gauge and these are just hollow inside so there we are I hope that was kind of interesting I'm not sure if I got a good deal on this or not because I paid about just under 70 bucks for for this whole thing shipped but the problem is like around here like in my area you don't really find this kind of stuff you just like anywhere you you either have to like you know try to find it online or really really search for this sort of thing so when I came across this one it, it looked good enough that I thought okay well I'll give it a shot see you know how it goes so yeah I'll probably just end up replacing the the electrolytics there and those other capacitors I guess I got to check and see what they even are first to see if they even need to be replaced any uh, tube fanatics down there in the comments you know feel free to tell me what you think about this thing and thanks for watching once again and I'll see you guys around the bench feels really smooth